I'm actually based in uh, Israel at the moment. I'm a journalist um, reporting the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. So I've been there for about four years, um, hanging out in the West Bank and in Israel. And uh, one of the things about being a journalist in this conflict is that you get familiar with, with the way that the conflict is branded in the media, um, the way it's portrayed as some kind of historical conflict between Arabs and Jews that has been going on forever. You know, um, they've been at each other's throats for as long as we can remember. One of the reasons that I wrote this book, We Look Like the Enemy, is that I, I really just wanted to challenge that polemic um, as though Jews and Arabs have been at, it, at each other's throats forever. You know, that's clearly not the case. And we know that's not the case because there's a population of people, Jews from the Middle East, um, Arab Jews, if you like, um, Israel doesn't like, so you don't often get to say that in Israel. More often, that population is referred to as Mizrahi or Sephardi, you've probably heard in the States. Um, they are the majority population in Israel. 40 to 50 percent of Israel's Jews come from the Middle East. At one point, it was 70 to 80 percent. In the early 90s, uh, the migration of close to a million Jews from the collapsed Soviet Union kind of reshuffled the, the demographics and, uh, and uh, equalized the sort of east-west mix in Israel. But prior to that, there were a majority. So when you look at that demographic, say you've got 40 to 50 percent Jews from the Middle East, 20 uh, percent of the Israeli population are Palestinians who stayed in what became Israel in 48. Um, it's, it's very clear that, you know, Europe is the minority in Israel. Mm -hmm. But that's not the impression that we get when we look at Israel from outside. Um, and that's partly understandable because, of course, the majority population of Jews in the diaspora are European, they're Ashkenazi. So um, when we look at Israel, we kind of expect them to look the same, right? We sort of think that the Jewish state would look like the Jewish people outside. Um, and, and of course it's also in Israel's interests to want to be European and right from the start Israel's pioneers said that it was going to be a bastion of Europe against the, uh, the, uh, the Middle East. Um, and you know Israel very much wants to be seen as part of the West, part of uh, the enlightened liberal West as opposed to the barbaric, uncivilized Middle East. Um, and the Arab world also has a stake in portraying Israel as Europe, because then it's an implant, then it's foreign and shouldn't be there, and, you know, is, is a kind of misfit. Um, and that, again, ignores the fact that there have been Jews living in the Arab world for ages. So it's something that everybody is in some way vested in perpetuating this image. When Israel was formed in 48 and before that with the migration of uh, uh, Jewish pioneers, pioneers they're called in Israel, um, to, to, to Palestine, uh, they came with a set of assumptions about the Middle East. So, um, you know, being Western, being European, they had a set of values, assumptions, prejudices we could say, racism we could also say, uh, about the other Arab world as being an uncivilized place, um, somewhere that had sort of inferior standards, cultural desert, um, all those things that you know we still hear about the Middle East. Uh, those Jews that came from Europe to to create Israel came with those assumptions. Um, now, obviously, that's going to be problematic when those assumptions encounter a bunch of Jews from the Middle East who, you know, speak Arabic, um, practice Arabic culture, um, are very much absorbed in Arabic music, Arabic cinema, and have a kind of mindset and outlook of the Middle East because they've been living in the Middle East forever, and for them, Arab is just a way of being Jewish. So, all that stuff, all that stuff that the Jews from the Middle East came with, their vibrant histories, um, thousands of years old histories in the Middle East kind of was denigrated in Israel 
um, wasn't really seen as having much cultural clout and um, wasn't seen definitely as something that should, that, that, that should come to represent Israel. When you look at Israel now, you see that the Jews from the Middle East, I'm just going to call them Arab Jews, we're, I mean, you know, we're not in Israel, we can say Arab Jews. Um, when you look at Arab Jews in Israel, you see that they're socio-economically weak. You know, they've been disadvantaged, um, they've uh, not had an equal share in the resources of the country, education, land allocation, all those things that have resulted in uh, Arab Jews being a, a weak demographic, they're basically the working class. Um, and there are plenty of Israeli stats to show that. Um, you know, a, a European origin kid is three times as likely to get a university degree. Uh, European origin Israeli is, is, is earning 38 points above the national average, and an Arab Jew is earning quite a few points below. So all those stats are there. And they also have a, a, a culturally weakened status in Israel. 90% um, of the state's cultural budget goes to, to uh, European culture. Because it is quite odd that a country that has a majority Middle Eastern population should come over so much as a, as a European country with a European culture and a European identity. And, uh, you know, the, the, the process that that happened um, really came right from the top and right from the beginning. So uh, Israel's first Prime Minister, Ben Gurion, he said about Arab Jews, first of all, he said they were without a trace of Jewish or human education. Then he said, we do not want Israelis to become Arabs. We are in duty bound to fight against the spirit of the Levant, which corrupts individuals and societies. And then there's Israeli Prime Minister Abba Ban, who came to power in the 60s. And he said, one of the great apprehensions which afflict us is the danger lest the predominance of immigrants of Oriental origin force Israel to equalize its cultural level with that of the neighboring world. So this is something that came from the top. But it also permeated society. This, this thing about we can't become Arabs, okay, we have a population of Arab Jews that are the majority, but we cannot have that culture being that our culture because if that happens, then in some way, you know, Project Israel will be sunk um, because then we'll kind of regress to the levels of the region and that self evidently is a bad thing. Those were the assumptions that permeated society um, whilst Israel was forming its identity. When you speak to Arab Jews now, you know, they'll talk about this process by which they learned that if they wanted to get ahead in Israel, they had to kind of ditch their home, home habits and home customs because, you know, not only were they inferior, but they were associated with the enemy and, you know, were not part of what Israel should be. Um, and you, you just hear this story repeat itself again and again if you, if you go around talking to, to Arab Jews. Um, there's one Israeli sociology professor, Yudha Shen Hav, um, who talks about how he pestered his dad to, to change their surname, which was uh, Shah Rabani, he's an Iraqi Jew. Um, and he, he told his dad that it would just be really embarrassing if he went through life as an Israeli called Shah Rabani and that it would hold him back. Um, so his dad changed the name to Shen Hav, which is a very fine Israeli name, European Israeli name. And um, Yehuda Shen Hav now has to go and visit his dad's grave with Shen Hav written on the head headstone. So, you know, this is something that, that, that he has to live with the consequences of. Now that he regrets that decision, which he made, you know, because of that ambient social environment of Israel.